那我们时间差不多，那我们就掌声欢迎马丁来为我们带来这场演讲。OK， Hello， 大家好。呃，那这场演讲就是讲 Arch Linux 要怎么移植到 ARM 上面去。然后开始前，先提醒一下，就是在大会上应该有公布说这场演讲会是英文演讲，所以接下来，呃，过了开头之后，我就开始全部用英文。呃、uh, ，Again，、uh, if anyone saw the、uh, agenda on the on Coscops website, this presentation will be entirely English. And、uh, English, I will start speaking English、uh, from basically now. Uh, first of all, if anyone wants the slides,、uh, it's、uh, if you are using using the centralized system, it will be on GNU.NET and IPFS. You can scan the QR code now.、Uh, I can wait for you to scan the QR code.、Uh, select one.、Uh, both are the same thing. Uh, if you don't use the centralized system, it's fine.、Uh, I'll, there's other QR codes later that will allow you to, to directly download. Done. Great. Okay, so、uh, if you want a Google presentation, it's on your、uh, on your right, and if you want a direct PDF, it's on your left. Again, I'll, I'll wait for everyone to scan the QR codes. Do 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 do. Waiting, waiting. If anyone needs more time,、uh, just raise your hands. I will be waiting. We have plenty of time today, and shouldn't be a problem. Okay.、Um, seems everyone has scanned the QR code. Should be fine now.、Uh, let's start the presentation. And again, warning: this is a English talk.、Um, Uh, today I'll be speaking English, and there will be a bit of QA time afterwards.、Uh, you can speak Chinese. I'll translate into English, so the English listen,、uh, listeners will be able to understand that. And also, there's really nothing new here.、Uh, it won't help. It won't help if you already know how to build、uh, Linux from scratch. And this talk is titled "Hack" because this is really not the way you should do it.、Uh, but this, but it works, so I'm not gonna complain about it. And I'm hoping that、uh, the Takeaway today that you get is,、uh, you can do, you can be brave and do anything you want. It will probably work. It's probably have some cash ups, but it will work good enough that it'll push your work forward. And I hopefully enjoy it.、Uh, first of all, who am I?、Uh, I have been using Arch Linux for、uh, about seven years.、Uh, I think back in high school, one of my classmates introduced me to Arch Linux, saying, "Hey, you know, you are using Ubuntu.、Uh, it has old tool chains. It has old compilers." No, Arch is cool. I I I always have the latest tool. Why you why you why why sh you should also try it, and that's how I started to use Arch, Ar、uh, use Arch Linux.、Uh, now I work in basically HPC and AI stuff. So I write、uh, high-performance code. I do image processing, and a bit of AI inference coding, and mostly systems programming. And open source-wise, I'm a maintainer of Dragon,、uh, which is a very fast C++ web. Uh, web application framework, and、uh, on the bottom there's my blog that you can look at.、Uh, it's mostly HPC systems and some obscure protocol stuff.、Uh, you can you can go through it later on. Okay, agenda.、Um, so today,、um, like I said, we'll be introducing how to get Arch Linux onto ARM. But first, we'll be talking about why exactly are we trying to do that. And second,、uh, what's Arch Linux ARM?、Uh, how there are pre-built packages for this one, so in case you are able to use it, use it.、Uh, if you aren't, I'll show show you two examples on how we use it.、Mm. Yeah, we'll be、uh, we'll be showing you how to use it, and some po post install script,、uh, post install instructions tell you、uh, what's up, what's available, what's not available. Uh, what's our, what are the steps that you need to do to fix a bit of security issues like default passwords? And finally, some time for QA. And、uh, what this talk is not about? Well, it's oh sorry oh oh there's a typo. Anyways, what this talk is about?、Uh, it's about、uh, getting Arch Linux on your ARM board or ARM server.、Uh, that's about it. 
uh, what this talk is not about is not about you dev rules, kernel patching, device tree, you boots, anything that you can think about is like practical re uh, embedded engineering. We aren't we aren't going to talk about that uh, any bit. Okay, uh, by, before we start, uh, I just I just want to show our, show us uh, uh, some demos about what's the result that you could expect from this. Uh, this is a board called uh, from Xilinx called the ZCU 102. Uh, it's a board that I used back in uh, university for research, and we ran Arch Linux on it. Uh, on on the screen there is just the board, and it's a actually loading into Arch Linux and give me give, give us a root prompt. And you can see in the in the host name there's alarm uh, or Arch Linux R, uh, just to prove this is actually Arch Linux. Uh, the second board we have been going to talk about is the Honeycomb LX2K from Solid Run with a uh, CPU from an XP. This one is a half server, half workstation board, uh, which is, this one is pretty cool. It has 44 uh, 10 gigabit FSP ports, uh, PCIe, uh, NVMe, and support for ECC memory. It's a pretty cool board, and it's also very high density, so I know some some people will use it in a rack-mounted server. And this is my version of it. Uh, this is my board, and as you can see on the right, it's running Arch Linux as well. And uh, yeah, this is the two boards and what we're going to talk about today. Uh, before we start everything, like why, seriously? Why would you run Arch Linux on embedded devices and a server? Like, why? We have Ubuntu, right? We have Debian. We have Yocto Linux. Why the fuck you want to use Arch? Uh, okay. Uh, so hopefully I can make a solid case for Arch Linux uh, first on embedded systems. Uh, I started using Arch Linux on embedded systems back in university. Uh, I first started using it uh, while doing uh, teaching uh, FPGA programming inside university as a uh, helping the TA. Uh, before that point, we are using Ubuntu 15.10 uh, and on, uh, let the Zilinx Zy supported and provided image. But when I when I started to teach, uh, that image gone out of support. That like APT just doesn't work, and there's a lot of other issues that uh, Zilinx should have patched, but Zilinx drop support, so there's nothing that we can we can do about that. Also, this version is not TLS support, so it has only nine months of longevity, which has gone right way bef is already dead way before I started using it. And we can just upgrade to a newer version of Ubuntu either, because we don't know why things just break. Uh, I think Xilinx is adding adding some magic in there, and well, it's Xilinx magic, we cannot fix it. Also, um, why we chose Arch Linux is because after this, we don't want to deal with this draw upgrade anymore. Like Arch Linux is rolling release. So unlike Ubuntu, like every half a year or two years, if you are using LTS, you have to upgrade the version. Uh, with Arch Linux, we are always upgrading. And therefore, we don't have to upgrade the 50 boards for our students to be able to use the latest tool chain. We just have to ask, uh, distribute the boards to, to our students and ask them to run Pac-Man reboot, and they got the state of the art system. Uh, finally, because students co uh, constantly mess things up, and we all know how DPKG is horrible at dealing with dependencies. Uh, once a student, I don't know what a student does, but then when DP DPKG tries to repair the dependency chain, uh, DPKG tries to remove glibc and the kernel, which is not fun. And we just ask the student, please just you know, here's the image, uh, flush, uh, burn it. Uh, this is beyond savable. And after that, uh, we used Arch Linux. Uh, everything just got solved, and uh, we started using it in actual research. And this, at that point, I'm still using FPGA for devel uh, developing FPGA. And at, for research, Arch Linux provides us a the latest tool chains, compilers, and sanitizers, so we are able to. Uh, debug a, lo a lot more efficiently and be able to use new C++, C++ language features. And second of all, I can upgrade stuff. Like, well, um, sorry, G uh, there's a, a G older glibc doesn't support a better random function that we need for our embedded system. Oh, well, I just upgrade glibc, right? I don't have to wait and do a distro upgrade. 
Uh, finally, uh, if you have ever done uh, deal with anything for embedded system, you know that you basically have to compile everything from scratch, which is not the case on Arch. On Arch, we are just able to Pac-Man install Vim, and we actually got Vim. So when there's something wrong on the embedded system, well, Vim, we just Vim it. We don't have to use our external editor or compile Vim and put it on there. And finally, not many people knows how to build a root file system. And so the Arch rolling model allows us to build once and uh, the people who uh, will take on our research won't have to rebuild the entire image again. And okay, next, why Arch on ARM servers? Uh, this is my personal server. And so the first reason is why not? I use Arch, I love Arch, so Arch it is. Uh, but it also provides a latest li library for uh, uh, experimentation. Uh, also, uh, w if you have ever tried it using any ARM server-based distros, you will find that some dependencies are missing from the system package. Uh, for example, uh, some uh, NumPy sometimes acts weird because uh, the Intel MKL library is unavailable, and therefore it do something weird. But with Arch, we are just able to compile everything from AUR. And because we are compiling from source, we have uh, full control over what it's doing. AUR will, will complain about that. Like, this is on ARM. This doesn't look right. But trust me, 99% of the package will compile and will work normally. Uh, but one thing to be aware of if you are on uh, trying to do this on a server is uh, the vendor kernel preset can be a trap. Uh, what I've found is uh, sometimes ZFS is disabled, namespace is disabled, so you, you cannot use Docker for some reason. Uh, the default locks the CPU onto 100% speed, which uses more power. And sometimes the Arch Linux and your vendor kernel would uh, basically collide, and they put the same kernel file in the same place. And uh, when you upgrade the Arch Linux kernel, and then your vendor kernel gets replaced. Uh, things you have to take care of, but uh, we'll talk about that later. Okay, uh, first of all, how do you build your Arch Linux image? Uh, ho hopefully I have com uh, convinced you that on embedded system and on ARM servers, it's a good idea to use Arch Linux. But how do you bu build your own Arch image? Oh, well, uh, first of all, uh, I think everyone knows that Arch Linux o officially only supports x64, uh, x64 architectures. Uh, like your your laptop or your Windows laptop or your uh, desktop is most likely x64. And th this is where the Arch Linux ARM project gets involved. Uh, it's called Arch Linux ARM, A-L-A-R-M. Uh, don't, don't get it confused with the alarm clock alarm. Uh, the alarm here is a acronym. Uh, it has a lot of pre-builds for uh, specific boards that they have they can officially support which is most likely cheap boards or vendor boards that they send to Arch Linux ARM or they provide a generic base system that will help uh, that you can build up on which is what we will be using today and also finally don't don't be confused with the official Arch Linux projects this is two, uh, two totally completely different projects maintained by different people the only thing in common is the source codes. Uh, what Ar Arch Linux ARM is ba does is basically they grab Arch Linux source code, run a ARM compiler, and get something out, uh, get a bootable ARM system out. And so Arch Linux ARM, uh, if you are lucky that you, ha you can use a preview image, there's a tab on their website called platforms, and you can go down say a 132-bit or 64-bit ARM. And if you go through there, you can find your board, nice. Please use that. that. That is the easy way out. That's like basically using standard Ubuntu or standard Debian for your board. Just burn that it onto SD card, boot, it will work. Uh, if you are that, that lucky, good luck. I love it. But if you are not, you, but if if you cannot use that, uh, you need like you need a custom kernel or you have bootloader limitations, or uh, anyways. But in that case, you have to boot, uh, build your own root file system. And this is where I'll show you how I did it for the two boards. Uh, before that, what is Linux? Uh, s sorry, but I have to paraphrase our mess here. I'd like to interject for a moment. What are, you, what are you referring to as a Linux? Is in fact GNU slash Linux, or I have recently 
taken to call, calling it GNU plus Linux. What does, wait, what does RMS trying to talk here? Well, Linux is just the kernel. So it's the, the software in your system that talks directly to the hardware. And what we typically, uh, we said this is a, an OS is the user space or the tools and commands that you can execute. And this, this is now funny because you see, this is a diagram of the Linux architecture. On the very bottom is Linux, like the Linux kernel. But everything on top is something that you can install with a package manager, or you can just put it somewhere in your file system. In any ways, what we can do is we generate a bootable Linux image for your system, a specific your ARM server or embedded system. We delete everything besides the kernel and replace that with Arch Linux it will most likely to work. And uh, like I said, this is hacking, so it's most likely not it will work. 99% um, it will work. Uh, first example is the Xilinx ZC102 board. Uh, for, for this board, you need two things first. One is a working Peta Linux setup. Uh, Peta Linux is Xilinx tool to generate uh, embedded, sy Arch Linux, uh, sorry, embedded system image based on Yocto. And you need the gen generic Arch Linux ARM image for ARM v8, uh, which can download be downloaded from their website. And what we'll be doing is essentially we build a working Yocto Linux to boot to be bootable on your board, and we delete everything besides the bootloader and the kernel and replace it for Arch Linux. Uh, so for Pitol, uh, sorry, for Pitol Linux, what you do is you create a project and give it the required board name. Uh, and uh, we run the kernel config, which is the last command. And in the last command, uh, you want to set the board to be, be booting from the, the EMMC or the SD card, and enable early count in case we screw something up. Uh, this is the boot menu that you will look at. And on the option called generating boot arcs automatically, you can just type the commands in and it will, it will tell the kernel, try to boot from the SD card and where the root, root file system is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. After you boot it, uh, just a uh, Peta Linux build, Peta Linux package. The package command will generate a build a uh, runnable Linux image. And the result will be your know, project root image slash Linux. Now you burn that thing onto your SD card, boot, make sure you can get into Yocto. And now is the fun part. Uh, you decompress the Linux image that you got from Arch Linux ARM and rsync-a. The A is a archive flag, which will keep file permission and uh, the file date. And just sudo rsync that into your SD card to replace everything that Yocto has to provide. And now you just turn Yocto into Arch Linux. You plug your, your, you plug your card in, enjoy. Uh, I said, like I said, this there's nothing new if, if you know how to build uh, Linux from source. Uh, the second example a bit more complicated. This is the Honeycomb LX2K board uh, that I use. Uh, for this board, there is official Ubuntu build script. So you can go to github.com slash solid run slash LX2160A uh, build. And that will give you, a, that will, you will find a script there that builds the uh, Ubuntu core image for the board. But, uh, but it's Ubuntu, we want Arch. So it's sad that we have to run, uh, it's Ubuntu. And so what we can do is we can hack it to build Arch instead, right? Uh, this board is more like a workstation, like I said, it's not unlike the odd previous board or embedded systems where everything is inside a single board. Uh, this one, ha you have to add stuff to it. So uh, in my example, I, ha I added a NVMe SSD to it, also a GPU. Uh, the GPU is totally unnecessary. It's just because I want to use it. And if you look at their source code, it is a 600 line bash script that you don't want to look at. It's a mess. Uh, but okay, it's a mess. It doesn't support Arch Linux. What can we do? Well, no worries. We just read the code. And so if you go through the code, you start to like doing black magic to it and start to understand uh, how they build the source, the image, you'll, you'll, you'll start to see that it is not, uh, it, although it's very long and very convoluted, what they are trying to do is relatively simple. So 
if you look into how they copy the sort the files, you'll see that uh, you'll see that a .ext4 extension, which we can assume is a .ext4 file system image. And we can basically safely assume this is what they are trying to install to the system. And if we go up and search the uh, search for the same file name, you'll find a section that uh, where they try to download the Ubuntu core ISO image and uh, decom uh, decompress it and repack it into ext4. So uh, in this example, it's, uh, the, the shell script basically says if Ubuntu uh, Ubuntu's ISO, uh, ext4 doesn't exist, we create a directory and get clone some stuff and download download Ubuntu, decompress, recompress, uh, de uh, unpack and repack it into ext4. And so at this point, uh, we I think we have two options. The first, the first thing we can do is we make the script instead of downloading Ubuntu core, we make it down to Arch Linux ARM's ISO and that could repack for us. Or the second way is, well, we just drop the entire uh, conversion step. Like we don't ask it to decompress, uh, de depack and pack for us. We just place the entire root file system inside the directory where they originally packs, uh, pack the script, uh, pack the file system and let them ignore all the checks and it, it will pick it should pick up our file system and pack it right and therefore we just comment out the entire section here and put uh, the decompress uh, arch linux image inside the directory so sorry here so we just bsd tar the download the image that you can download from their website and into the, the folder called slash images slash temp. Uh, this, this is where they put the expect the root file system to be. So we just put it there and we run the script. Well, it, it runs, it runs, it runs, and then boom, uh, E2CP arrow, there's no more space on left on disk. Oh, well, what, what happens? And it's, this took me uh, about two hours to debug, uh, but eventually I found that well, Arch Linux ARM's ISO image is actually a lot larger than the Ubuntu Core's image. Ubuntu Core is like 350 megabytes, but Arch Linux ARM is 500 megabytes. It's surprising. It's actually very surprising. Arch Linux is more, is larger than Ubuntu. Wow. Uh, anyways, well, let's, well, since we're just running out of, out of space, we could just, you know, in, increase the space, right? And that's exactly what we, sh we could do. So if you, if you do a bit more grabbing and Vim search inside the, inside the script, uh, you can find uh, there's a 350 megabytes Im image that is, that is truncated. What we can do is just bump it to 500 megabytes. And now it works. Uh, after replacing every instance of 350 with 500 megabytes, uh, it works, it builds, it generates the image. Uh, it gives you something that you can burn onto SD card. And now the problem is how do we install this stuff onto the solid state drive? Uh, if you go through their documents, it will give you the three comments down there. It says, oh, well, load stuff from EMMC and write it to the, the NVMe drive. Now the problem becomes uh, there's magic numbers. What are the net magic numbers doing there? Like, what is that zero x a four a bunch of zeros, and what is uh, the number that's the zero x d two blah 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 blah? They they didn't document anything, and the worst part is well, it drops you into U-boot shell, which is like not even Bash. This is Linux isn't even running here. Well, uh, so after some like googling around and goofing around. Apparently, uh, it's very difficult to run a R in actual installer on ARM. So what they are trying to do is remember they generated a ext4 packet, ex, uh, sorry, ext4 image. Uh, what they did is basically saying, hey, this is the ext4 image. Ask Uboot to directly write it into your SSD. And after after writing into it, uh, you have ext4. You can boot from it. Uh, you can then modify the system to suit your needs. And Okay, great. But what is the first number? Well, that looks like an address, right? 
if you are familiar with C programming, that looks like an address. And the 0xd2000, uh, it looks like, somehow looks like uh, possibly the sectors, uh, how many sectors are we writing to the SSD. And since SSD normally have 4K sectors, we can multiply by 4,000 and we get 350 mega, uh, megabytes. So, well, we can safely assume that's the sector size, uh, how many sectors we write. And so what we do is we replace that with uh, 0x6e000, which is about 500 megabytes. And after writing that, that works. Apparently that works. We just reboot the machine and we are actually dropped into Arch Linux ARM shell. Yay, hooray. Like I said, this is a uh, break stuff. You don't, you don't have to do things conventionally. Uh, you do stuff that seems to work and it will eventually work. Uh, it works, we are in uh, into ARM shell and at this point we just have to fdisk uh, the root partition to make it larger, add a swap, uh, edit fs tab, and uh, you know the standard Arch Linux install stuff you have if you have go gone through Arch Linux. And now we're we are into Arch Linux ARM. So what should we do after booting into it? Uh, at this point, you basically have a standard Linux environment, and so what you have to do, and you just have to uh, know your default credentials and what's on there. So basically, there's a root user called root, and the password is root. There's a basic user called alarm and password alarm. Again, alarm stands for Arch Linux ARM. Uh, SSHD is enabled by default and DSH, DHCP is default on. And there's also firmware provided so you can use a GPU, you can use uh, Wi-Fi cards on it. By default, there will be no problems. And just remember to change your password. Uh, back in the research, I, once we forgot to change the password, and what happens we, is we got hit by automated bots and we actually lose that board to the bots. It's a shame. Please, if you do this, re do, do change your password. It sucks. Um, then you just have to initialize Pac-Man. I think they, they, they try to save space, so Pac-Man keys uh, are not default, default initialized. It just Pac-Man dash key dash dash init and then populate your and you have pac-man uh, after you have pac-man you can install git you can install everything from there and it's standard arch linux it, it used like arch linux it well it is arch linux and enjoy you have full arch linux uh that's the process on how to hack arch linux onto arm devices uh i guess that's the entirety of my talk uh, any questions that anyone wants to ask or details you want you want to know? Okay. Uh, if no. <laughs> uh, so I think it's okay to talk about Linux. 我沒有在上面踹過,但是我知道事情是如果你直接抓 <笑> OK 對我知道那個Oracle有給一個好像24核心的ARM是不是 44G 
有提问吗？哦，好，我想问一下，刚才是有那个可以多讲一下那个，有一个那个 kernel preset 的那个东西。哦，对对对。那因为我刚才听到说，他们预设都会关一些 namespace 的东西，那这样会造成他没办法做弄到一些 container 上面的东西吗？呃，不好意思，你我听不太到。哦，喂，哦，好，我想多听一点那个 preset， 就是说预设，应该它也是预设，就是。那它应该是可以打开吧，就是它还是可以换掉嘛，只是你预设就是可能要先看清楚，然后去把去把它 enable 就可以了。对，就是呃，像是在它给你 build script 的时候，这个 build script 会下很多预设。那一般来说，我们其实我们都很习惯，就是 kernel 编下去什么东西应该都会 work。呃，但是因为它是 embedded system， 所以状况有点不太一样，就是它通常 vendor 会。跟你说，我预计你会用到什么功能，所以他就把一些你预计不会用到的东西全部关掉。那所以这时候你就要去真的要仔细的去看，说他到底有开什么功能，没有开什么功能。然后甚至运气不好的话，你还要去看 vendor 的 extra， 说哪些东西不会动。对，那呃，像这片板子，它的预设就比较比较糟糕一点，就是 ZFS 没有，所以你你要你要比较好的 file system， 就只有呃 butterfs。然后它的 CPU default 也是 performance， 所以 CPU 都是全全速运转的状态。然后 namespace 没有开，那 namespace 没有开，其实就影影影响比较严重一点。一是你没有 Docker， 你没有 L L X C 可以用，所以你什么你要在在上面部署什么 K 3 S 啊、K 8 S 都不行。然后因为然后有一些 process 也会自己用 namespace 保护自己，所以你因此好像什么 Git T 啦。也跑不起来，你都要改掉这些，要改掉 namespace preset 之后才会动。对，哦，那可以延伸问一下，因为你刚刚有提到说，呃，这些板子其实本身有些人会拿来做一些 rack 的东西。对，这样子你这样子的话，所以这样他们那些的话，也就是可以去看他们自己的 vendor， 然后就可以知道说是可以部署这样这种东西。因为像现在 namespace 这个，其实刚才讲如果限制很多的话，其实还蛮有点可怕。对，就是 vendor。真的就是，如果你们要做这些事情，就是真的要去看一下 vendor vendor 当初到到底在想什么。呃，它不像 x 八六上，就是安装下去，然后什么都会动。你有很高的机会安装下去，然后突然发现真的缺功能，然后你就知道整个 kernel 重新 compile 一遍。好，谢谢。好，谢谢。那我们时间差不多，如果你还有问题的话，可以来前面询问一下子。那我们就掌声谢谢 Marty。